What's up, everybody? Back at it. Still working on this article, Milton Friedman's Capitalism and Freedom. And I think that's what the article, the video title is going to be. It's going to be close to that. So let's start here. Um, let's change the highlight. No, oh, that's a pen. Yeah, let's keep the pen going. Let's go with brown. And... <laughs> contrast the productive power of capital can be massively concentrated through ownership uh, let me go back with the highlight my penmanship with the mouse is weird I'll go with brown and the amount of the work capital can profitably be employed to do to do depends on Depends significantly on the distribution of its ownership. Y'all, it's late here. I've got to get this paper done. And thank you for your support. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the pen here. Hopefully I come back to this reference. Productiveness, distribution, and growth. Let's do the basic yellow. Capital's contribution to growth involves much more than increasing the productivity of the people who work with it. Increasingly, cap increasingly capital, hmm? increasingly capital is doing even more of the work. The economic imperative is generally to produce more with more productive capital and less labor. Produce more with more productive capital and less labor. That makes sense. Although capital may be seen to concentrate higher productivity into fewer workers per unit of out output, as a general rule, the primary effect of technological advance is to make capital more productive than labor and thereby to replace and vastly supplement labor productiveness with even greater capital productiveness. Moreover, by virtue of its increasing product productiveness, capital provides an increasing capacity to distribute income and freedom. Ah, so this section here, um, I wanna be able to paraphrase, sum it up in one sentence. I don't know if there's a note section here. Capital's contribution to growth involves much more than increasing the productivity of the people who work with it. Mm, productive, productiveness, distribution, and growth. Productive, product of, productiveness, productiveness, distribution, and growth. Produce more. Produce more with more productive capital and less labor. All right. So what I'll reiterate here is the author provides um, summarized provides academic academic perspective perspectives that what's another word for elaborate explain I think I've looked this up before another word for elaborate Mm, details. The author provides academic perspectives that detail. Okay, we'll go with that. That detail. Instead of saying product, productiveness, distribution, and growth, I'm going to say that detail, distribution, and growth within the economy 
All right, and then the economic imperative is generally to produce more with more productive capital and less labor. Instead of specifying uh, supporting, mm, instead of specifying talking points, instead of specifying argumentative points to support his rhetoric argumentative his anti-freedman I'm gonna say anti-freedman instead of specifying argumentative argumentative points to support his anti freedman rhetoric, he gives a snapshot of general economic of his his own general economic understanding of uh, efficiency of Productiveness. Productiveness and efficiency. By articulating, um, by articulating, economic productive is generally produce more with more productive capital and less labor. By articulating the obvious, such as the obvious imperative to produce more. Produce more with more productive capital and less labor. To produce, to produce, create, develop, and distribute more in a cost effective manner while utilizing less labor by articulating the obvious imperative to produce create develop and distribute more in a cost effective manner while utilizing less labor the author will just say Robert Ashford is able to gain minor mm, gradual credibility. What's another word for credibility? Another word for credibility, trust, reliability, depend, integrity, status, cachet, gradual, I like that word, 
acceptability. Reader grant gain gradual. Reader gain gradual gain gradual acceptability from readers by articulating the obvious imperative to produce, create, and distribute more in a cost-effective manner while utilizing less labor, Robert Ashford is able to gain gradual acceptability from readers. All right. So I got something out of there. Um, I had to muscle that one. And let me add a reference. Ashford 2010. Oh, I want to be done at this. I still got three more articles. I should go back and forth. That's what I'll do. Ah, that's what I'll do for now. Um, we'll close out YouTube and open up more articles. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll find, go to our references. We'll go to EBSCO host. And I'm going to look for the contributions of Milton Friedman to economics. And I'll try to dig away at that. So I'll try to put these articles in order. <sighs> Fudge. A little bit at a time. What is this highlight doing? The contributions of Milton Friedman to economics. Thank you for being part of this study session. Mm, is this what I'm looking for? Herzl. I don't think so. Contributions of Milton Friedman to economics. 2007. Wow. Oh, this is it. Oops, I meant to hit PDF full text. So, full text. All right. So, I'm going to sign off for now. We got, wow, this one's 31 pages, really? They are being ridiculous. Uh, okay. Mm, let me get the highlights ready. It's 11.15 now. Mm, you at least know the, the title. The Contributions of Milton Friedman to Economics. Let's do it one more time. The Contributions of Milton Friedman to Economics. We're going to start here. We're going to highlight in yellow just this first paragraph. Sometimes just drawing around, doodling helps you retain the content. It's weird. Uh, Milton Friedman died in November 16, 2006. At the age of 94, any attempt to put his contributions to econ economics 
into perspective can only begin to suggest the vast variety of ideas he discussed. Burton, 1981, 53, commented that attempting to portray the work of Milton Friedman is like trying to catch the, Ni- the Niagara Falls in a pin pot, in a pint pot. At the beginning of his career, Friedman adopted two hypotheses that isolated him from prevailing from the prevailing intellectual mainstream. First, central banks are responsible for inflation and deflation. Second, markets work efficiently to allocate resources and to maintain macroeconomics equilibrium. Because of his success in advancing these ideas in a way that shaped the understanding of the major economic events of this century and influenced public policy, Friedman stands out as one of the greatest intellectuals of the 20th century. All positive stuff there. And let me get at least one. I went kind of deep for this first first one. Let me at least get the reference going. So it is Herzl, 2007. Herzl, you might not see the second monitor that I'm using, but I'll find out and I'll make my tweaks as I go on. All right, I'm going to sign off for now and kind of chill out in the bed and think about this paper, another paper, and the gym. Those are my two focuses right now. All right, thanks for joining. Thank you for attending my TED Talks.